How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Book Shifting and welcome to our brand new series, Chusotsu. Uh, now this is interesting, so the, 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 and the subtitle for it is First Graduation Time After Time. Now, two things I gotta talk about real quick. First of all, welcome to the channel if this is your first time here. If you're not, if you're one of our regulars, welcome back. Of course, it's good to have you. As you probably know if you've already come here or if you want to know because you're newer, Fridays is the day I cover more obscure titles of visual novels. Um, I tend to gravitate towards the bigger named ones and have them on my Monday and Wednesday slots. Currently, I've got my Monday slot as Muv Love Alternative. If you're a fan of the Muv Love series, I highly recommend you check it out. I've got a library of like, gone through Muv Love Extra, Unlimited, and now Alternative. Over 100 videos. It's, it's crazy, but uh, it's also a wonderful series. Uh, my Wednesday is also Crystalline, which is by Pixel Fade, which is a Western maker, but it's a fantastic series as well. I highly recommend that one. But if you are here, you are here because you want to try something a little bit new. I highly recommend if you've never played this before, go ahead and watch the first couple episodes with me. Just get a taste for it, see if it's something you're interested in, and then I'd recommend playing it yourself. And then we can compare notes and talk about the experience together. Otherwise, I just hope you enjoy yourself, and I hope you enjoy my thoughts and inputs on the series. Now, a little bit of background of what this series actually is. Chusotsu is about a alternative world where... Uh, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of... Oh, shoot. Now I can't think of the name. Uh, in the future, they streamline efficiency in this series. There's a lot of these types of slightly dystopian futures I see in a lot of anime uh, and manga and visual novels where it's like very similar to a modern world, but shifted a bit. In this case, uh, your education defines your future, and you are kind of assigned a role based on your aptitude. But there are a few people who, for whatever reason, have to drop out of school. Maybe it's a medical reason, maybe they just are ineffective, maybe they had an emergency of some kind. But for whatever reason, they didn't quite go to school and finish their education properly. Well, I believe they become what's called the Chusotsu, um, which is where they've kind of lost the track and they become kind of the lowest tier citizen because they're seen as being um, a drain on... on on like the resources of the country rather than being someone who can contribute. So they have an opportunity to go back to a kind of a remedial school and to try and find a place in the world. And I believe that's what, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be following the story I'm guessing of these three as they are trying to find their place in the world. Uh, it made a big disclosure at the very beginning saying like we do not contone discrimination. So I'm guessing that there's going to be a lot of discrimination in this story but it's based on the idea of telling a story not trying to say this is what we actually think we should do which is funny that they felt they have to say that but you know in this world it makes sense so without further ado let's jump right in and see what happens because i have no idea what to expect at all oh one last thing though thank you so much for uh fruit bat factory once again uh they've been very helpful for me on the channel they've been around since i was very small um and they often are connecting me with a lot of these visual novels and some and a lot of times for free including this one so they sent me a free copy for, of this um, I believe it's, it's in the Steam store, but and I'll have a link for it in the description if you want to know more about it. But thank you for Bat Factory and just uh, you know I continue to look forward to working out. I, like every game they've sent me so far, or even recommended to me, has actually been really good, and it's been one that most people don't seem to talk about. So I'm happy to talk about it anymore. So anyway, that's enough of an intro. Let's jump right back into it. All right, so we'll see how this one plays out. I have no idea what to expect. She needed to get this done, no matter what. Um, oh yeah, that's the best part though. If we're doing one that doesn't have any voice acting, which I think this one does have voice acting in it, but if it doesn't have voice acting, you're gonna hear my lovely voice do voice acting, which is terrible, especially because I have to do lots of girl voices. <laughs> if you just go to quit halfway through, you might as well be dead. She read that in a manga and believed it so ad adamantly that she kept whispering it to herself. There were so many things she had to do, an overwhelming amount. What would she start with? That should have been obvious. She first needed to take care of what was right in front of her. The rain? Okay. So there is voice acting in this. Very good. The sound of a pen on paper mixed with the patter of the rain. She was currently battling with her homework, an essay. Her theme was the authority seal and my plans for the future. Okay, so this is, uh, um, the, I, I think everyone has to do this in school. I had to do it a couple times where you kind of like have to try and outline what you want to do in your future. 
Um, it's kind of funny, though, because it's like, how do you grade something like that? It's just an opinion, really. Maybe they can give you advice based on what you say. She planned on presenting it during Joint Society Ethics. Society class, for short. Hmm, Tori out of how many? The pile of documents had created a small mountain. The beaten up desk they had picked up out of the garage dump, dump groaned weakly under the strain. Dang, that's a crappy desk. She rolled her head in circles to stretch her neck. She then did the same with her shoulders. Kind of made her feel like a businesswoman past her prime. Hardly fitting for a girl who recently turned nine. Nine? She's writing an essay at nine? She borrowed the documents from the library. They weren't exactly a bedtime reading material, but if one wanted accurate statistics, there was nothing better. After all, this was an essay for society. Her future was at stake. Ooh. Dang. I can't even think about actually writing an essay at nine. Figuring out a plan for the future was done voluntarily while one was still growing up. That was the direction of the United People's Federation of Earth had taken. Gifted education, essentially. It was quite a conundrum. Yeah, see, this would be bad for me. I definitely, like, not to toot my own horn, but I have always not, I've never really struggled in school. Like, I always found it pretty easy. But I also never tried. So I think this society I would do terrible in. <laughs> With a system of self-obligation and for achievement in place, a girl like her needed to find ways to inspire herself. She gave her cheeks a light wake-up slap before twisting around backward in her seat. That was when it happened. Real quick before we go, so remember how she said that there were 20 million applications that were accepted into whatever that was? I was thinking, oh, if that's the country Japan, that won't, not, probably not too bad. I mean, probably about half or more, or tons more, I don't know. I, I, to be fair, I can't think off the top of my head with the population of children in japan is right now um however if that but she mentioned how there's a world kind of it feels like it's a world government almost and if there's just 20 million out of the entire planet like aka at least 7 billion that is a very exclusive group so what happened she saw it the crack in the wall her brother's desk with heaps of weekly manga lying unceremoniously on top uh oh don't get distracted the Weekly Shonen Jump. Needless to say, it was a popular magazine targeted at boys. Oh, come on. Just write your little essay, little girl. I promise. Hunt x Hunt. <laughs> One pieces. <laughs> she felt her heart dance in her chest. She was beyond excited. She might have been a girl, but she simply couldn't help being fascinated by hard work and that unique sense of triumph. And the unfolding series of fanatical adventures, and ultimately repetition. Hey, it's fine. We still love it. The main character's ultimate moves displayed across both pages. Anyone who didn't yell out the names of their special moves had no business being a hero. That's right. There lay a complete world of fantasy. That divine marriage of ink and paper we call manga created a world that never failed to make this girl's heart go wild. And cautiously, she reached for the magazine. Come on. Just another centimeter. The girl react re retracted her outstretched hand. This had been decided from the very beginning. For their existence, a task had to be accomplished beforehand. For their existence, a task. Oh, I know it's so sad, but come on. It's better just to get it done with early and then play. She turned back to the mountain in front of her and continued on. Having the willpower to overcome such temptations was essential for anyone aiming to, to become a well-respected adult. See, I, I've always been like, the, I'm very like a attack it now and play later kind of person. If I have a list of chores or like work I have to do, I try and just knock it all out immediately. Because then I don't have it hanging over my head all day. And so it followed that she needed to pour all of her heart and soul into getting this done. She ignored the source of leisure, though expelling it from her mind. Thought, thoroughly expelling it from her mind. Manga was the path of fools. What was the path of kings? Was it friendship? Maybe friendship? Was it friendship? Maybe friendship? What about friendship? <laughs> Since she entirely lacked friends, the girl got overly excited whenever she thought of the world word friendship. Even as a falling rain continued, ruled the gray skies, time halted not to take shelter. Lunchtime, the Sunday family gathering. A brief period of happiness had arrived. What would today's menu be? White rice, seaweed salad? Come to think of it, it was the same as last night. Very, very uh, simple, basic foods. 
Seaweed salad was good. Easy on the wallet, too. It grew bigger when you dipped it in water, just like space food. A case of, oh, sorry. A case of seaweed inflation. Her brilliant brother once joked. The, giggle, the girl giggled without really understanding the joke. Seeing the two of them, their mother also joined in. The sound of laughter echoed throughout the old house. A drop of water fell on the top of the salad. Uh oh, man. Yeah, the more we get this room, the more it's not looking good. Oh, that would be... I have a heart attack. Like, I'm, I'm a first-time homeowner. Like, I'm afraid of recently. And especially for the first few months, if I even heard a weird noise, I was freaking out that the house was about to blow up on me or something. But this house is old and running down. She looked up. Some rain was leaking through the roof. That's bad. Oh my! These leaks are such a bother. She held onto one end of the table while uttering the words in a tone both light and casual. The brother and the girl promptly followed suit. Three, two, one, they moved to the table with everything still on it. Just adapt and move forward. A leak formed in the new location, too. This one, though, was caught in a bucket, sending faint ripples along the surface of the water inside. See, water damage is so bad, though. Like, maybe they don't have the funds to fix it, but by not fixing it, you're exasperating the problem. Looking up, there were nine leaks and 12 square meters of living room ceiling. Oh my gosh. The, ta the, the tatami mats were peeling. Wind passed through the sliding door, and marble slid across the slanted floor. The toilet, naturally, was one that was the was of the pit latrine variety. Ugh. A common de decency would dictate that the bath be not be mentioned at all. Oh, the stereotypical image of poverty, if there ever was one. But even that was laughed away. As long as they had jump, children with nigh invincible were nigh invincible. They were ready to survive even the toughest of ordeals to get their hands on next week's issues. But there were some times when they couldn't laugh. Times when smiling wasn't good enough to uh, wasn't a good enough med remedy. In their mother's bo uh, body, that strong pillar of su which supported the whole house lurked a demon of a disease. Oh, fetch, man! It's getting dark quickly. She had been wrestling this demon for a while, raising two children. Oh, oh! It's, I'm I'm learning the buttons. Okay, so if I hit this, oh, okay, cool. She had been wrestling the two the, wrestling this demon while raising two children. If it's a demon, I'm going to guess cancer, because that really is probably one of the most demonic of diseases besides, you know, like, actual, like, mental issues. <sighs> Alright. Alright. Interesting. Well, she definitely approaches this, because I'm guessing this is her presentation. She's approaching this very soundly. She's picking two focuses, I'm guessing, which are going to probably be the ideal extra classes she might be taking. First being PE, which she's bad at, which I'm terrible at. I've always been terrible at it, but I have... A, medical conditions that can contribute to that, and B, I hate it. I just hate it. <laughs> uh, but she's choosing her weakest one because she wants to strengthen it, and her society because she needs that one to be like near perfection if she's going to get the job she hopes to get. Okay, so it does sound like this is probably one nation and 20 million take the compatibility exam and then out of those only 200 or 001 percent are actually chosen for leadership roles. それにもし適正検査の結果他の序部になることが決まったら一生その序部を続けていくことになりますそれが人民の名誉と喜びだからですいや、yeah, there's only a small part of me that can go get get along with this concept of like like determining jobs based on like uh, capabilities rather than on desires 
Um, I do think it's important to have a populace that can feel like they have happiness in what they do. But at the same time, there is an argument to be made that if you grow up with an understanding that you're going to be given a job that you are most qualified for and that you're going to do that job for the rest of your life, you're not going to have a whole lot of people who are truly that discontent with their job. They may be discontent with the system, but it almost is harder to feel like you, A, know what you want to do for your job but not being able to do it because it can't pay the bills, or B, never truly understanding what you want to do with your life and feeling like you just took whatever happened to pay you and rather than following your passion but not even knowing what you should have done. That sucks. But at least they have the opportunity to change. The fact that they can't change their jobs would be very difficult. Interesting. Authority seal is probably going to become important. So, now there's the, the dream of a child that's like locked inside this very interesting essay. She needed to get this done, no matter what. This was to save her mother, who worked day and night with her bony, bony hands and rattling cough. Ooh, okay. So probably not cancer then. She had something she needed to do, no matter the cost. What would she start with? Effort. Even without friendship, enough effort would help her grasp her victory. Even she had to dismiss all requests to go play. Even she became the class reject as a result. Aww. That's actually really sweet. What kids do you know would willingly give up their favorite shows or toys to be successful and provide for their family at nine? She obviously can't get a job at nine, but she already has this goal. And so the seasons came and went, one after the other. All right, the place inside the train station. The time, 7.55 a.m. The rush hour train slid past the platforms. Men and women in suits burst out like water crashing through a collapsing dam. Oh, uh. Aw, so this is our first look at who she is. A little older, obviously. There it was, a surge of people. A bustling whirlpool of civilization. And a young girl about to drown in it. Ooh, that, you're not getting off that chain, are you? Hurry. Oh, she's adorable. And the train on track, on track 4 will be leaving. Sh ding! The train on track 4 will be leaving shortly. Please stand behind the yellow line. Is she going to miss like a really important meeting because of this train situation? That would suck. Or was this one? Okay. Good job. As the doors began to close, she was barely pushed out of the door and onto the platform. If I can't manage to lose weight before I go to Japan, like, I am going to cause serious problems on the subway. <laughs> there was only one train line in her hometown. She never experienced not being able to have a seat when riding a train. Actually, today was the first day she got a train by herself. Man, what a what a daunting first try. Morning rush hour. People passing by. She couldn't just stand there after having a brief heaving a brief sigh. She let the wave push her along. Oh. No matter where she looks, there's nothing but people, people, and even more people. Good. God did instruct man to populate the world, but still, she couldn't help thinking they were a little over capacity. <laughs> She's very self deprecating. Oh, yeah, I'd be. At least you can read. <laughs> she took a quick look around. After a while, she spotted the information panel. Uh oh. Face turning white. <laughs> Cold sweat begins trickling down her face. 
It was clearly laid out map, but the path throughout the station didn't hold any structure in her head. It was like the map of a dungeon made for an adventurer. The girl just stood there, still as a statue. The next train arrived, and along with it, a second wave of people. Pushed along by the wave, she ended up being brought outside the ticket gate. Oh. No, it wasn't. Ooh. Ooh, there's some fancy little effects. Flower petals swayed along in the breeze. They were cherry blossom petals. It was spring. The skies were clear and blue, with a few wispy clouds covering a portion of it. <laughs> the feeling of release from the sea of people. Without even noticing, she let the world escape her mouth. The words escape her mouth, not the whole world. That'd be intense if the whole world escaped her mouth. But she's pretty cute. Like she definitely seems like she's like a middle schooler. My guess would be. Um, reminds me of like uh, the, the the anime that was very weird. Uh, Aramanga Sensei. She reminds me of the main character, like the the sister from that show. Oh, that show. That show was. Uh, I don't know. Like I don't. Sometimes I just like I like having my my portion, my little portion of the more like frivolous slice of life's but that one was just strange <laughs> not sure if it was my cup of tea she looked at the waves of people flowing around her more specifically their hands right well i mean i'm guessing you're pretty young よっぽどのことがないかぎり適正検査で進学先なり that's the spirit. Re-examination. Okay, so she has to retake the test for some reason. She mustered her resolve beneath the sunny skies of spring. Her name was... Oh, goodness. Okay. Marisugawa Arue. Arue. I've never heard the name Arue. Uh, but it's definitely pronounced in the in the Japanese style, so I'm guessing is that a traditional name? Do you know that, or is that a like a kind of a more like made up version? Because I've sort of never come across that one before. A plain looking girl, although the kind of girl who looks like looks good in glasses would have also been an acceptable description. <laughs> she probably would look good in glasses. I think everyone looks better in glasses. Her hobby was manga. She liked reading them, but enjoyed writing her own even more. She was 15 years and 4 months old. Yep, so she is definitely on the young side. She had the traits of a hard worker, along with the traits of an airhead. <laughs> Ar Arua would, fa would focus on whatever she was doing. As a result, the time she spent raising her compatibility rating during her mandatory education period was quite fruitful. Kido. But she also spent a lot of time in the hospital oh, with her mom. She initially contracted the disease back in her first year of middle school. It was a paradoxical time of self-loving and self-loathing. The disease was not lethal, she had already conquered it. But with the two years of hospitalization and in-home quarantine, her attendance rate, her grades in the primary subjects, plus all the other categories of the compa compatibility examination, all red, A-L-L-R-E-D. Without any leeway to be allowed to start over, uh, Aru Arue, Arue ended up graduating from middle school. As a result, the type, needlessly diligent girl. Characteristic, extremely nervous. Notes, from a social standpoint, from a societal point of view, your stage fright is quite problematic, you know? Her status looked even more or less like that. Mm. Ah, she, she is scaring easily. Of course, that was right in my ear, and I almost jumped. Because it's freaking loud. She jumped up, startled by the sudden vibration of her smartphone. 
Oh, she wants to be in government. She'd fit right in, honestly. Alright, so maybe I'm mistaken, but is getting married at 16, like, actually a thing in Japan? I don't think it is. Like, I think... I know the age of consent in Japan is different, lower, like, maybe it's around 16 or 14, I can't remember. Uh, but I'm guessing in this dystopian future, I guess the marriaging, marrying age is lower? Good grief, I didn't know what I wanted to do or who I should marry when I was 19, let alone 16. Jeez. Exactly. You gotta admit, their bonds are strong. That she's lucky she's got such a good family. Dang. Aww. Call ended. Otherwise, my arms fall limp to her sides like a pair of weights. Talking about her family had always been carried by a bit, uh, carried a bit of a burden on her heart. She didn't hate them by any means. Her younger years were filled with smiles, nurtured by bonds strong enough to overcome her impoverished lifestyle. She did actually regard them fondly, and for that very reason, her past was unforgivable. Man, ever so. What a coincidence. We haven't seen each other since the graduation ceremony. Suddenly, she heard some voices from behind. Hey, come to think of it. I don't believe I've ever asked. But how was the result of your compatibility examination, Miss, uh, Misoe? Misoe? Hmm. Soko, you went to the university, right? Yep, I'm studying Japan University Department of Law. Wow, wow, wow! That means you've succeeded in becoming the ideal girl. I'm jealous. Huh? What about you, Miss Zoe? I'm a line worker at the bread factory. Guess your compatibility examination results didn't let you move on to university then? Yeah, my job is to make sure there aren't any defects among whole melon wraps. Makes you wonder what the compatibility for a line worker really is. Exactly! I work 10 hours a day, 5 days a week! Leave it ignoring all that. I have a super boring job and the pay isn't all that great. I'm so worried if I can really keep it up my whole life. I see. But since that's the law, I have to spend my whole life shipping off whole, whole melons for other people to enjoy. Oh man, I really wanted to experience campus life. Misoe, Misoe, you dimwit? What? Just getting an authority seal is already an accomplishment in itself. Some people out there can't even get a hold of what you take for granted each day. Your attitude is disrespectful to those poor sad people. Mm, well, I guess that's true. That's right. Live a pro proactive life. Man, Aruga, you really know how to look on the bright side of every situation. She clenched her fist tightly, her plain white fists, for fists of hue of flesh, fl of fresh snow, completely white and without any dirt or stains. You go, girl. By the way, by the way, that girl. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, she's wearing a casual outfit. And look, there's nothing on either of her hands. She's 
one of them, isn't she? I'm glad she's not paying attention. Well, that's how it is. She looks younger than us, but... The fact that she's not wearing any uniform and that she has no seal can only mean... A Chusotsu! Aww. She's a Chusotsu, right? Aww. What is she talking about? I kind of feel sorry for her. So let's go. Looking at her gives me motivation to live on as a whole melon worker. We've got to give our thanks to that unemployed, unemployed girl. Oh, uh, That sucks. Oh, <laughs> Just come on. Come on. Positivity. Positivity. We believe in ourselves. <laughs> don't, no, don't go. Don't go psycho. Don't go psycho. <laughs> Last time I played a visual novel where someone laughed like that, someone died. Sadly, her. <laughs> Her soul broke free of a prison known as the body. So this was descending to heaven felt like. Not even close. Had to 10,000 meters. In middle school, I worked hard to find many subjects with a focus on PE, which I'm bad at. Society, especially society. In order to become a government employee. 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 Aww. What? Big Sis became an elite, right? Isn't that why I'm studying this hard? I'm holding back on manga and even spending all my spare time studying. Chusus. Chusus. Ah, hey, I said that right. Good. What? 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 What's happening? All right, got the first achievement. <laughs> it's been over a hundred years since the United People's Federation was born, and as a result, it's a successful worldwide revolution. The P3 law, which was enacted as soon as the Federation was established, obligates every member of the human race to wear an authorized power certificate, also known as an authorization seal. The authorization seal is a, no uh, a nanomachine system that strengthens the wearer's abilities depending on their job, arbitrarily assigning signed through aptitude tests by the authorities. I mean, that's kind of cool. Technology-wise, that's kind of interesting. As the seal gained through these tests cannot be replaced, you'll be stuck with the same job for the rest of your life. On the other hand, your job will remain safe and secure unless you commit a crime. As a result, the populace is no longer concerned about its welfare. That is... Okay. To be fair, not a huge, really great system, but if it actually worked and there were literally nobody without a job and literally nobody who was starving, that's not terrible. That is to say, the people have gained lives without any financial troubles through their sacrifice of, of free choice of employment. At first, the citizens accepted this and gradually started enjoying it. It did not take long until the P3 law had become a given. No effort was required to get a job. No competition arises under the law. Anyone can live a clean and righteous life with a smile along, uh, uh, alongside someone important to them. Before long, people quit having dreams for the future. Ideal, idols, dreams, and competitions have been overwhelmed by fairness and equality and eventually forgotten. Okay, there's definitely some downsides there. Fetch! The very concept of dreams has faded away. That's like, oh, I don't know if that's entirely true though. They saw in the manga, people have to dream to do manga unless you have an aptitude test that says, oh, you should be a manga artist. That'd be interesting. But uh, no, like, it's kind of this interesting idea of where like the inherent, the inherent struggle and competition can bring out some of the best in us. Some call this world. A dreamless world. Interesting. The B3 law has brought equality and, equ and equity to the world. Equality and equity. Except, this is a philosophical story about how three good-for-nothing Chusotsu girls spend a peculiar 
a particular part of their youth in a world where the authorized power certificate decides everything from jobs through abilities and personal income. Cool. Uh, Goal of Federation History of the World added to tips. Oh, okay, so there's tips in this game too. Our last game, uh, and our last game, which was Seabed, had tips, and those were pretty important to the story. So I'm guessing this might be made by the same people. Like, Rumor Factory publishes various creations, but uh, I'm guessing that, that this might be along the same lines because the, the, the structure is very similar. Let's see. So, in fact, let's go ahead and try one of these tips if we can. I, let me. I guess I'll just save real quick. And a lot of saved pages. <laughs> no, I don't want to back. There we go. Now let's try out the tip. Let's see. Oh, okay. So this is just like it's just like history and background stuff. All right. So buckle up from the uh, expositions. Um. Okay, so CSE, Joint Society Ethics, a, su a subject of comprehensive curriculum is also one of the five primary subjects, National Language, Mathematics, Society Ethics, Science, and CSE. All right, so um, CSE has two main categories of study. Firstly, it details the United People Federation fundamental principles of his and history. Secondly, how the authorization seal, the ticket to life of every citizen works. By learning these since childhood, the people are able to gain a better understanding of the P3 law. Okay, so, um, so it's part of the study is just understanding like the system and how it works. Interesting. I, I'm sure I probably would have either got been uh, I, I I would have had an aptitude towards mathematics and science probably, but I also understand people. So society ethics would also be a pretty big one for me. Aptitude tests. The examinations that take place all over the world at such junctures at the end of compulsory schooling or at the end of higher education. The tests are fully based on the P3 law and on and the initiative from the government. The tests fall into three categories, written examination, physical performance tests, and personality tests. The results of these tests determine the applicant's authorization seal, in fact, their career path. The personality test is based on the personal records stored in the applicant's seal through their personal number. They take cell fragments from the part of your body to which the seal is attached and have a specialized in institution to analyze them in detail. Wow, so it's even based on your genetics. That's an interesting way to take a personality test. Uh, kind of brings up the, the biological side of our personalities. All young citizens, uh, ever since they were little, have been more concerned about the particular, this particular test than the other two because it largely determines how the rest of your life will play out. Joint Society Ethics is the support subject for this test. P3 Law. An international law enacted by the United People's Federation, all citizens are obligated to hear the following. Number one, each person is naturally a citizen of the Federation, thus their very first job is equal to the new it, job is equally the newborn infant. Great, that's a job. <laughs> two, depending on the results of the aptitude test run by the authority, one job and one authorized seal are given to each citizen and they must wear the seal. Number three, the amount of income and the place of residence are decided depending on the author authorized power certificate of the citizen. That seems a little unbalanced. That kind of seems like if you're in a higher like position, like working for the government or a doctor or something, you would naturally get to live in a bigger house. You think in this unilateral system, everyone would get the same. Um, the amount of income and the place you reside. Okay, uh, number four, should a citizen act against the law, the given amount of points or all their points will be deducted from their authorized power certificate. Okay, so it's a point system. The authorized power of the citizen with the authorized power certificate is five. So, so five is like the starting point. And six, so that's, citizens without authorized power certificate are take, uh, take another set of aptitude tests. This is, is a right each and every citizen is allowed to have. Okay, so like, without a certificate, you're allowed to take the test. It's like, as long as you, you never can be denied to take the test. Um, interesting, so this is also reflective of an interesting trend that we're starting to see from China, if the stories I've been able to read uh, have, can be believed. They're kind of taking this concept of um, a credit score and applying it to a social score, which is determined by a lot of factors, like um, the job you have, your education, like all that stuff and like your crimes and such and the social score can determine like the kind of future you can have too so we're almost seeing a country that's apparently taking on something kind of similar to this system which is interesting 
I, once again, like, mo like while this while this system does seem to have some merit, I ultimately think it's not great. Federation. Official name of the United People's Federation of Earth. The nation was born by uniting all the countries all over the world. Federation of Republic run by talk ex top executives. A new age federal nation with the goal of worldwide equality. Through count though counted as a nation, it is practically an international government organization composed of multiple departments. The success of the revolution was the biggest factor for the primary developed countries to assess the, uh, to ascend, uh, ascent to the federation. Even though the identity of each country basically remains intact, they are all treated as a national, auto nation, national autonomous community under control of the federation, which forbids them from describing themselves as a republic or as a united nation. Since the United People's Federation owns such specialized institutions as power, uh, pol uh, policy power, or the right of self-defense, every community has to follow the rules and principles. The Federation, the center of the world, is based in a small northeast Asian country that used to be the stronghold of the revolution. Okay, it's based on the, on a small northeast Asian country. It's not trying to say Korea, is it? I don't, that doesn't seem right. no idea it's a if you know where that's supposed to be referencing I'd love to know uh, specifically maybe it'll give more hints as we go along uh, world history oh here we go maybe we'll get this uh, everything began two centuries ago there's an age where economic science reaches height competition and bid rigging turned into chaos and the gap between rich and the poor widened to an extreme uh oh the right wing, uh, wing versus the left wing is difficult for, to, for the shield and the pike to get along with the help with, with and help each other. It is inevitable that equality and equ equity become the dead letter when the haves and have-nots coexist. According to the records, in this chaotic world, a private organization staged anti-government demonstrations in various parts of the world. The demonstrations were first only held by small groups, but before long ballooned in numbers and turned to national reform movements. At one place, there was a demonstration employing explosive rhetoric. Another, there was a terrorist attack using extreme vocabulary. Interesting. So they're talking about like like attacks, but with words. The cross inspired out of control. Even more movements like these took place simultaneously all across the globe. This is called the Relay of Reformation, uh, Reformism, uh, C87, a textbook. All human race, the human race reached one of its biggest turning points. All of these movements involved violence and caused military action. A civic movement was no longer the correct term to describe what was happening, but rather revolution. The world versus the civilians. The clash between the establishment and the anti-establishment was, needless to say, easily brought to an end by the former on account of a considerable amount of wealth, combined power, and influence, and then quelled by the, uh, the sugared words of politicians, the citizens ceased to rebel, or so the whole world thought. The movement that was practically already under control surged anew because of one scientific breakthrough. An unknown substance was discovered. It was dug out of a small northeastern Asian country that had been alienated, mocked, and loathed by the rest of the world. Okay, it is sounding like North Korea. Gosh darn it, we're living in a future where North Korea won? Aw, oh, man. Like, is, could, could it be anywhere else? Northeastern Asian. Like, it's hard to think on that, on the scale, because like, Northeastern, yeah, I mean, it's got to be that, isn't it? Even though the country had been left outside of the movement, it worked together with the rebels and the new substance was succeeded in establishing a monumental technology, the body-melting nanomachines. That was the moment when the entire globe reached a point of paradigm shift. The new technology brought the movement to success. The paradigm shift, old regime came to an end, was replaced by a world with one shared principle of utilizing the nanomachines. And the Northeast Asian country, one in charge of success of revolution, became the leader of the world and was declared the founding of the new republic. They united the developed countries into one federation. This is how the United People's Federation of Earth was born. Yeah, I just realized the United People's uh, Republic of Korea. Isn't that... Oh, man. Oh, I can't believe that. That sucks. <laughs> well... Curse you! They finally won. But I think that's where we're going to have to end for today. I think we've got a good intro to this. Um, shocking revelations. 
Uh, but regardless, new world order, now we're going to try and find a place in it. Once again, it made it very, very clear that the game's not trying to condone any type of action or lifestyle or government action. <laughs> they simply are exploring ideas, so keep that in mind. But I think, so far, it's a very interesting premise. I, I can't say that I'm, like, uh, how do I put it? I can't say that I'm not intrigued. Like, I'm already ca captured by this idea. Now, and here's another question I'm curious about. So we know we're following the story of three girls. Do these three girls interact with each other? Or are we following them independently of each other? Or are they gonna do a kind of a whole um, uh, Bakuno type of a deal where you follow each of these people, but they have a time when they all, all their lives converge at some point, but we follow them like beforehand, before they end up meeting each other. I have no idea, but I think it'll be pretty fun to explore and to see what else we have coming up. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel. Uh, if you're new here, I, I hope you feel like you can join us. Um, we've got a great Discord community if you like to talk about visual novels, specifically the ones we're, we're playing, or if you want to leave me recommendations of games to play in the future, that's the place to do it. Uh, you can also uh, just leave a comment below. I do. I try very hard to go through and reply to comments directly and as soon as possible. So there's a really good chance I'll see, read, and talk about what you want to talk about. Um, and you know, if you like what you see, if you enjoy visual novels, good stories, and you just want to stick around, I highly recommend you stick. Uh, you, I don't know, like stick around <laughs> you know how to do that i'm not going to tell you what to do but i'd love to have you here thank you so much for spending your time and with, with me and, and ultimately boosting visual novels for what they can be visual novels get a bad rap sometimes people focus on like either the super fan servicey ones or they just don't understand that despite the fact this doesn't have typical gameplay that you can't have an incredible experience exploring the stories characters and settings that are so unique to visual novels. Uh, so thank you for sticking around. And you know, next Friday, look for the next episode of Chu uh, Sosu. So until the next video you watch with me, whatever you see me in next, I'll see you there.